Jesus has risen. Jesus has ascended with all his glory to the right hand of God in heaven, filling everything in heaven and on earth, ruling as King of kings and Lord of lords. Aren't you happy for him? Isn't it wonderful that Jesus has left behind that lowliness, his meekness, his humility, and now is in heaven with his divine and human nature, what he was before with just his divine nature. He's true God, God Almighty, and God Eternal. And for 2,000 years, we've joined the disciples, gazing up into heaven, wondering when Jesus is going to come back again. And wouldn't it be wonderful if he just came and swooped us all to be with him in heaven forever? Wouldn't that be wonderful? But he hasn't done that. And maybe before this worship service is over, he'll do that. But probably not. And, and what we're left with seems so shabby in comparison to Jesus' physical, visible presence among us. What we're left with is a book called the Bible to read and to understand. We're left with water that we sprinkle on babies' heads. A sacred meal, communion, where Jesus' body and blood is present. But they seem so shabby compared to Jesus' visible, physical presence among us. But maybe not. Maybe in this time we have before Jesus comes back again, if we would take time to think and to ponder what Jesus really has left behind for us, it would take our breath away. Think of that passage that I read, John 3.16. Maybe you knew it from little. Maybe you had it memorized. But if we would really take time to think and ponder and to chew on and digest that passage, it would literally take our breath away. God so loved the world. I want you to imagine right now that you've never heard that verse before, okay? This is the very first time you're ever, ever hearing that verse. Think about what Jesus said to Nicodemus when he came to him on that dark night. Thus, in this way, God loved the world. Who would have thought of it? Ever since Adam and Eve fell into sin, this world is a sinkhole of sin. Turn on the news. Look at the internet. Check what's on TV. See what's playing in the movie theaters. It's sin, it's evil, it's vice of every kind. And it's only getting worse. And it's only getting worse. And God so loved that world. Who would have thought of it? Oh, and there's more. You and I are part of that world. Yeah. You and I, with those sing sins hanging from our necks, those actual sins that everybody can see are gossip and our lying and our arguments and our hatred. You and I with those sins, the guilt and shame of our sin hanging around our neck that nobody can see except we feel it. You and I who can so clutch to some sins to our bosom and never want to let, let them go. And God still loved you and me. Who would have thought? God so loved the world. But wait. Talk's cheap, though, isn't it? Listen to a radio talk show or a TV talk show. When they get done, they tell us that they love us, right? But talk's cheap. Go find that person who told you that they love you. Ask him for $25, see how much you get. Ask him for money for a nice meal at a restaurant or to borrow their car or stay at their home. <coughs> Talk's cheap. So when God says he loved the world, well, how do we know? How much did he really love the world? And so he says to Nicodemus, for God so loved the world that he gave. 
gave. Gave what? Gave us the nice weather today. Gave us enough food to eat. Gave us health. Gave us wealth. Gave us people to be with. If that's all that God gave us, that would be more than we deserve, wouldn't it? Because all we really deserve for our sin is hell. And if God gave us, if that's all that God would give us, that would be, be reason enough to get down on our knees every day and say, thank you, God. But that's not what he is talking about here. He gave us so much more. He told Nicodemus that God so loved the world that he gave, wait for it, his only begotten Son. And we gasp in amazement. His only begotten son? Let me ask you a question. If, if you had ten sons, would you give up one of them to die for your neighbor? Didn't think so. Would you give up one of them to die for a dear friend? I don't think so. You certainly wouldn't give up one of them to die for a murderer, would you? But this is how much God loves us. That he gives up his only begotten son. To come into this world, not to be an executioner, to give us what we deserve for our sin's death. But he gives up that son to come into this world, to the lowliness of the barn in Bethlehem, to take on our human flesh, to be our savior, to walk that long journey to the cross. He gave him up so as he was hanging from the cross, thinking of you and thinking of me and thinking of the whole world, he would cry out for you and for me and the whole world. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? As he suffered the damnation for the sins we deserved. Doesn't it just take your breath away? That's how much God loved the world that he gave his only son, only begotten son. But wait, there's always a catch, right? It's always too good to be true, right? What's the catch? Satan tells you that riches will make you happy, but there's a catch. Buy that lottery ticket. Oh, buy another one, buy another one, buy another one. Pretty soon you're poor and destitute. There's a catch, right? Or he tells you that, that drugs and alcohol make you happy, but there's a catch. Right? It's a lie, right? So take another pill, take another drink. But it's a lie. It's not true. So what's the catch? When God says, God so loved the world. Well, Jesus went on to say that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. That's not a catch. Believing isn't a doing. Believing is simply a receiving. Believing is just simply being able to trust that everything the person promises you is going to come true. You see, God so fully understood our total depravity of sin, the total corruption of our sin, that he even wasn't willing to leave the believing part up to us. So he gives us his word and the water of baptism and the body and blood of the Lord's Supper that create that faith in our heart to believe everything this passage said, that God gave his only begotten son for us. That's how much God loves you and me. That he didn't just give us his only begotten son, he actually gave us also the faith to believe in that one and only son. The faith that sighs and cries and says, he really meant it on the cross. It is finished. My salvation is totally accomplished. It's complete. It's done perfectly. And it's all done by Jesus. So away, proud Pharisee who thinks that somehow there's got to be room in that salvation equation for me. And away, despairing Judas, who thinks that possibly I've committed some sin so grievous that he couldn't mean me when he said he loved the world. God doesn't lie. He said, I so love the world, and you're part of that world, and so am I. He loved us so much that he would give us eternal life. There's that word again, right? Give what? 
eternal life. When Jesus ascended into heaven, he didn't take that gift with him, eternal life. It's still here for us. In fact, when Jesus ascended into heaven, it didn't mean he's left us. He's still here. God is still giving you and me his only begotten son. Jesus is in the right hand of the Father in heaven, ruling so that his word will never disappear. The waters of baptism can't go away. His sacred meal will be there for us. So you will always be able to know just how much God loved you. His word, his sacraments will not disappear until that one day he swoops down from heaven and takes us up to be with him forever and ever and ever. Yeah, in heaven. Heaven's going to be forever and ever and ever because that's how long it's going to take you and me to get our minds wrapped around this wonderful, beautiful passage. Think of it. God so loved the world, and that includes you and me, in this way, that he gave up his only begotten son, something you and I would never do, so that we, who don't deserve it, we deserve death and punishment, would not perish, but have eternal life. Wow. Doesn't that take your breath away? When we enjoy a beautiful day of weather like today, we enjoy a beautiful worship service like this Christmas Eve, we enjoy the company of each other, and we enjoy our friends. We stop and we think, what a great God we have, right? But that's nothing in comparison to just how much God loved us. He says, I loved you in this way. So when temptations come your way and guilt gnaws at your heart, when you have to go through tribulation, and you don't know which way to turn, whether this way, that way, up or down. When sickness comes on you and completely changes your life, or when we will, as we all do, we'll have to walk through that valley of the shadow of death, then when those kind of times come with a smile on your face, think of these words. This is how much he loved me that even in the valley of the shadow of death, he has the door wide open for me, his only begotten son, and will receive me into the eternal life in heaven. That is how much God loves us. Listen to the passage again. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Amen.